What's up everybody? It's Alex from Need My Fishing Fix. Today I wanted to talk about um, what makes carp an invasive species. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to hit that notification button. I'm about to be giving away a trip for people to come down and fish with me. All expenses paid. This is the perfect opportunity for you to see a new city um, or if you live in my state then this is the perfect opportunity for you to be able to come down meet with me cause a ruckus have some fun let's get to it guys currently there is a huge invasion of carp in the mississippi the missouri the surrounding areas and it's threatening getting up to the Great Lakes in Michigan and that surrounding area as well. Now, these species are referred to as the Asian carp. And what they are, con you know, what is considered an Asian carp is big head, silver, black, those ones. Now, uh, in 1993, there was actually a flood that caused these farm ponds to um, overflow and then the invasive species actually ended up in the Mississippi and the Missouri. Now how they were keeping the farm ponds clean was by eating all, all the algae. Now uh, unfortunately that is translating to loss of um, habitat, loss of plant life, loss of, uh, you know, the surrounding area's uh, ability to continue to have life in it. And that's a, that's a big issue, okay? That's a big problem. So these are, these are the fish that when you see them on the news, they're jumping out of the water, they're smacking people in the face when they, uh, you know, jump out of the water and, and hit them when they're fishing on the boat. So that's the uh, Asian carp, okay? These also land in the boat. They're really good eating, but um, that's a hard sell. I mean, you're, you're telling people that they need to eat something that, you know, is really popular in China and, uh, you know, Asia, Asian countries. So it's, it's kind of a catch. It's really hard. I mean, sure, people go to the Chinese, you know, market mm. or they'll go to the Chinese restaurant that's different. For people to think about that, that's been around since the 1800s. Chinese food has been in America since the 1800s when Chinese migrants came to America. So it's been around for a while. It's accepted. Let's get that out of the way right then and there. So these invasive species were originally brought over here in the 1950s. They are, like I said, hazardous, dangerous to our waterways. And we need to group together to remove them from our waterways. There is proven science behind their hazards, their dangers. And there's nothing that proves that they should be accepted in our waterways. There's nothing. So please, everybody, you got to understand that this is an ubiquitous fish. This is an overpopulated fish. And the only way that you can combat that is by using it as a food source. Now there are lots of uh, restaurants in the surrounding areas as far as Nor uh, New York as far as I know that has Asian carp on the menu. And these guys are, you know, they're struggling still uh, even in this at this time to sell this food source because of the non, well, the ones that shouldn't be considered invasive. But before I get into that and you start freaking out, I'm not, I'm not saying that it should just be non-invasive because it's my favorite fish. You know I like fishing for carp. So let's get that out of the way right now. I'm going to provide you guys with proof that says why I say this should not be considered a non-invasive fish. But we'll get down that route in just a minute. So if you've been with me for this long and you haven't done it yet, 
Again, I'm going to mention it. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button, guys. I have a giveaway going on. Uh, it's going to be going on pretty soon, and it might already be going on by the time you watch this. And then again, it might also be already over if this has been a year down the road. Uh, I have a giveaway going on right now on my channel for subscribers to have an all expenses paid trip to come and see me, meet me, go fishing with me, learn some tips and tricks, um, you know, cause a ruckus here in Utah, enjoy a new state if you have never been to Utah, and be able to see the, uh, you know, the surrounding countryside. Um, but of course, if you live in Utah, still subscribe because it gives you an opportunity to come meet me and be able to come fish with me and enjoy Utah in all its glory. So let's talk about that supposedly invasive species, common and mirror carp. Now, um, if you've never seen a mirror carp, they have very large scales on them. They're patchy with the scales. Sometimes they're full scale, but that is very rare. Uh, that's a mirror carp. They get dark. They can be a light golden, but they are usually like between the middle of a light golden and a dark black. And with the uh, with the species, they are an actual actually a genetic mutation of common carp. Now, both of these species were originally brought over in the 1800s, and they were brought over for one simple reason. These fish, the common and mirror carp, were originally introduced to the United States to be a food source for the United States. And we'll I'm gonna provide a little bit of a background for that. Now, these are European carp. They are Eurasian, sure, they, but they originally uh, became widespread in the lakes and rivers of places such as France, Germany, uh, Ukraine, just to name a few, okay? After the uh, Civil War here in the United States, carp were introduced here to help feed families in need. I mean, we were a war-torn country at this time, and unfortunately, our lakes and streams had become polluted and they were already overfished. So we needed a natural resource that, you know, was prolific. And that's why we introduced the common carp. Uh, let's be as accurate as we can be. It was uh, the United States Fish and Game Commission that introduced the carp in the 18, I believe it was 1877. Um, to help, you know, revive a uh, natural resource, water, uh, to provide food for these families, for us, our families. Common carp have been here for over 140 years. Now, with that being said, times change. People's mindsets change. And... It wasn't just the 1800s that American waters were polluted. They kept getting more and more polluted. And in the 1950s is when we realized that we were polluting the waters so much that the only thing that was left alive was these carp, the common carp and the mirror carp. Um, of course, you know, other fish species were just struggling to survive. They were still there. They were just struggling to survive. But when people looked over into the water and saw it, you know, overwhelmed with all these carp, it clicked in their mind and they thought, you know what? That's the reason why. That's the reason. No, right there. Carp. Common carp are the reason why our fish are dying. They didn't accept that it was human pollution that was causing this. And of course, later on down the road, we started, you know, saying, oh yeah, well, you know, it is, it is pollution that's causing our fish to die off. But they don't mention anymore about common carp. 
there was no money to be made off of carp anymore. So because people were not eating these fish anymore. So that's where this, you know, that's where that part of the story ends. Now let's talk about the new part of the story. If you live in a area that is full of carp, common carp and mirror carp, please understand that it, they're going to continue to do what they do best and that's survive and thrive. So our states would like you to believe that common carp and mirror carp are part of the Asian carp problem so that they have an excuse to get this fish out of the waterways. Well, that's because there's so many of them. And the problem with that is that it is not just some little myth. You can remove carp from your waters. You can do it forever, permanently. And it has been done. It's called rotenone. It kills all of the fish. And then it just gets repopulated with planted fish of the ones that are wanted. Now, by me saying that, by me saying wanted, I mean, I am talking about, you know, largemouth bass, catfish, so on and so forth. Those species that are not native, but are wanted. They are desired. Texas is currently saying right now that if you live in a place with uh, ubiquitous fish over a populated fish, talking about carp here, the best way for control is to use them as a food source and to accept them as a food source. I agree with this wholeheartedly. That's why I did started this YouTube channel. I love carp. I love fishing for carp. But that doesn't mean that they shouldn't be eaten. But we're not going to get into that. You guys already know that's what I do. I make amazing meals out of a fish that people consider trash. And I take out all of that trash flavor and I replace it with what makes carp amazing. And that's their natural pork flavor. So we're not going to talk any more about that. What we are going to talk about is what makes carp invasive. Now, underneath... In the uh, description, I'm going to go ahead and post the links to all of my research. So here we go. I'm going to hold this up because I've got it written down right here. Every reason. Okay. Carp release phosphorus. Carp consume fish eggs. Carp induce turbidity. Carp target small fish. That's it. Those are the reasons why carp are considered invasive. But the one thing that they don't want to say is, like I said before, there's no money in carp. There isn't. There, there isn't. England has found a way to make money off of carp, and they do it. And whether this is an invasive species or not, they introduced carp into, uh, onto this small island because money is being made off of them. Thanks guys. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Comment below if you don't think that I've really touched on what makes these fish invasive, but tell me why. Tell me why you think these fish are invasive. Like I said, common carp are not the invasive species. We are calling them invasive species for the wrong reasons. They have been established here for over 140 years. The invasive ones have been here since the 1950s. So, thanks guys. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. This is Alex, signing out.